Welcome to this video hop where eight creative people have met to complete a challenge utilizing three of six items to create something special. The way this works, you're starting here with me, number four, two oak crows, and you will move from my video to the next video, number five, where baking meets crafting, and so on. So the end screen of each video will be a link to the next. So let's take a look at those six items that we were given to create a simple challenge. A gel print, a stencil, texture paste, color spray, our yuck craft paper, and foliage. I created this item. This is a tag booklet and I utilized all six. I just couldn't stop myself. So I have used six, the six items within this creation and I shall share with you the process of how I put this together. As a quick reminder, my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And of course, I appreciate all of you that are already here. That notification bell does remind you when I upload additional content. So to get started, I chose some yuck scrap paper that I had. And I'm going to cut this guy out of that paper. And I also cut a second image out of the paper. I'm going to show you what I did with them just on this one, but I have done this with two photos out of that craft paper. My goal here is to transfer this image to the fabric. I've chosen a tightly woven fabric and I am going to coat this with Mod Podge or a glue and water mixture three times. So I'm coating it once, allowing it to dry, coating it twice, allowing it to dry, and this is the third coat. We'll set that aside and let that dry for a moment. And now we have the tightly woven cloth. We will coat that with one coat of the glue and water mixture or the Mod Podge and get that completely covered. Flip that image side down onto the cloth and just burnish it with, with our fingers to get it adhered. Now I'm looking on the front and seeing where that glue may not be adhering that fabric and just giving it a little, a little more of a spritz. I'm going to set this up to allow it to dry on both sides. And while that is drying, let's go ahead and cut out our substrate. I've chosen this craft paper or craft cardstock that I will be utilizing to create my tags. Cutting those three and a half inches by seven inches or roughly seven inches. And I am going to glue two of them together to create a firmer substrate. It's just cardstock. It's not any real heavy paper. And I am using the remnants to create a little pocket I'm going to put a little hole here. Let's get the center. I'm going to put just a little divot there to make that easier to, to notice. So that will be a pocket. And let's just glue two of these together. So there's the base for one tag. Let's glue the other two together. That will create the base for our second tag. And I'm pulling out a template that I've made to lop off the corners of the top of a tag. And it's just a card and I've just put a diagonal cut on the edge of the card. And then I flip that card over and I know that I have created equal cuts on both sides, measuring the center and I will take my ID tag punch to create that tag hole at the top. So there's our two tags and a little pocket to go inside the tags. Now I think that's a little tall, so I'm going to cut that down just a bit. 
And now with the remnants, I'm going to create three tags to tuck down inside that pocket. So now we have all of our pieces cut. And this is kind of how they will align. I'm thinking this process through here. I think I need a taller one, so I'm pulling in another remnant. We'll just slap that off. And there. I think I'm happy with that. So this will be a little booklet that opens. We'll have the little pocket on the inside front cover. Created just a, a additional little template there to not be cut so heavy into these smaller tags. And there. We'll put our little holes inside these three. And now we have everything created and ready to decorate. So let's pull out the gel press. We'll start with a thin coat of raw umber. And I have pulled in this piece of cardboard to use as my mark making tool. Let's put this and press this down so we get a good print. And there's the print that we get from that piece of cardboard. So I like that, but we need it on both sides, of course. So let's do it once again. Get our tags and our little pocket out here too, because we need to take care of those as well. I want everything kind of uniform and looking like they go together. I had some white on the edge of my brayer and it kept getting getting in the way. So I like this piece of cardboard as my mark making tool. It kind of puts a like almost a brick wall looking background on this. So there, we have everything. Let's clean that brayer off, clean the press up a bit. And I am coming back in with a copper. And it's a little bit of a metallic coppery paint. And I want to use some copper on this card, so I'm trying to get some of that copper color into it. And I am using a piece of drywall cloth to make my marks there. And I'm just randomly rolling the drywall cloth or rolling the brayer across the drywall cloth on, on the paint. And now <clears throat> I want to come back in with a light color, but I don't want it to be. I have this titanium buff, and I'm just darkening that up a bit with a little bit of that raw umber. So I just mix that right on the gel press. We'll come back with this stencil and pull that print. So there. I'm pretty happy with the way those three colors work together on this craft cardstock. Let's do one more coat. We'll mix right on here. I'm going to pull my palette knife in. I think that will mix a little easier that way. I'm just going to create a darker white, if you will. I mix the buff titanium and the raw umber to create that, put the stencil over the top of it, and I'm just pressing down these tags where I want to pull that image. I get the back of these. And there we go. So this is what we have ended up with as our base. This is the first tag, the second. And there's our little pocket. And then we have the three additional tags that we'll be able to stick down 
inside those pockets that will decorate up everything a little further. But this is this is our starting point. This is our substrate that we will be using to create. So we've utilized the gel press thus far. And our yuck paper. And I have squirted this with some water. This is the image that we have Mod Podge to the fabric. And I'm going to burnish this down with a spoon first. And I'm just taking that spoon and burnishing, burnishing, burnishing to make sure that that photo is in good contact with that fabric. Now I'm squirting with some water and just lightly rubbing with my finger to take the back of that paper off and reveal that image. And I'll speed this up and we will get this done in quick order. <laughs> you can see it took a while. You know, I'm leaning on my my arm there. And what I have done is I will rub for a while and then I'll dry it to see where we are and then come back, spray it with another little spritz of water and rub again. And I found that that drying in between let me know how much remnant of paper I still had and I could come back and, and rub. So we have two of those images that we have created and now I want to find a piece of copper that I can use and I found this little piece of um, twisted copper you can see it there on my workbench that I am going to utilize and a piece of lace so now I'm pulling in the color spray and just spritzing the vintage photo color spray on this lace to give that um, lace some antique -y look I'm have an old piece book page and I'm going to lay down that piece of, of lace I've cut down into just a little small square. I've added in some cheesecloth, some dyed cheesecloth, and I'm pulling some threads off of that cheesecloth to just bunch up and put on that bottom piece of lace. So I think that could use another little adornment. So I'm pulling out a button and we'll grab a thread and thread that button up and tie it in a square knot at the top of the button. Trim it up and there. I think that completes the front of this tag. So let's get that glued down. I want to, <clears throat> I've decided that I want a little more um, bling, if you will, on that picture. So I have this script stamp and I'm just covering up his little face there so I don't go over his face. And I'm putting some script writing and vintage photo across that image on the cloth. And now let's just mod podge this down. We'll start with the antique book paper. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tec to glue my photo with the cheesecloth on the back of it, on the one side of the back. And we shall glue that down to that atop the antique paper. This little piece of lace will position right here in the center. The little Fabri-Tec. And where that glue is coming through the holes in the lace, we'll stick down some of that um, fabric threads and the button. And this is the piece of copper. I had this piece of copper <clears throat> in, this was kind of in my jewelry fabricating days when I was learning to work with the copper. 
he actually made some earrings out of this copper like this. And I want that little thumb hole to be a little bigger, so I've pulled a larger circle punch and just widened that up a bit. So we'll flip this tag over and glue this pocket into place. So we have the front complete and the pocket in place on the back of that opening tag. I'm going to use some additional book page, little cheesecloth. We'll put that into place. I have that little steam engine there. And I think that looks good on that pocket. See how the tags fit in. Trim him up a little bit. Two, three, three tags into that pocket. That's going to work nice. So let's glue that book page into place. Or the cheesecloth, I'm sorry. And then we'll put the book page on top of the cheesecloth. And the cheesecloth I'm using, I've dyed with antique paper. So thus far we've used the gel print, the stencil, some color spray, and that yuck scrapbooking paper. Now I think that to make sure this piece of copper stays in place, I am going to lace it into place with a string of 22 gauge copper wire. So I've pulled that in. I'm going to twist the end of it, of the wire. Hold it with my pliers and just spiral it around. And that spiral will be our stop point on the back of the card. So let's thread that through. And I've poked a hole with my craft pick in the paper right next to the glued piece of copper. And I'm just poking holes as I go where I think it would be good to attach this piece of copper. So we have that in. Let's poke another hole and bring that copper wire back. And let's just continue to do that and thread that wire through, back and forth through this tag around the piece of copper that we have laid down until it's securely seated on the card. And this 22 gauge is, is a finer gauge, 22 gauge or uh, 40, 22 gauge or 26 gauge, 22, 24, 26 gauge are all um, thin gauges of copper. I buy mine in bulk from a company called Metalliferous. And I use it predominantly for jewelry making. So we have this all threaded up. So let's cut that final strand or cut that wire <clears throat> and we'll just do the same thing we did on the on the front. We'll do a, a light twist and then we'll spiral it. And there we have a little spiral rendition of the copper on the back of the card. 
So I went to kind of disguise all those places. We poke that copper through, grabbing a piece of cheesecloth. I'm going to bunch it up and tie a string around it or tie a thread around the outside, around, around it, around the center, and just glue it into place. And that makes a little bow effect there on top and kind of disguises all of those little places we've poked that through. We'll be able to stick our tags down inside that pocket and that will complete the structure of the back side of this card. And to create the tags, I have just pulled in some scraps of tea stain paper. And I'm just placing those side by side to create a journaling spot, if you will. I'm inking around each one of these scraps and then gluing it into place. So that's, you know, it gives a little more interest than just gluing a piece of paper on. Now I'm going to take my liquid pearls and just dot the four corners of that. Then I'll set that aside and allow that to dry. I'm going to do that to each one of these. Ink it around the outside edge and glue it into place. Use the liquid pearls, give it a little dot on each corner. And set that set it aside and let it dry. And here I'm just going to squiggle on the top, squiggle on the bottom, and there we go. So there are our three cards. So now we have to think about how we're going to attach the front tag to the back tag. So I have this piece of fabric that I had dyed for a different project and had actually used it as a page. And I'm going to cut two tabs and pull out that color spray again and just give it a little more distressing. Mop the rest of that up with a piece of cheesecloth. And we'll put those tabs right into place on the side of that. And we'll be able to use that as the attachment. So for this second card, we'll continue to use some of that fabric for that second photo that we transferred onto cloth from our yuck paper. And we'll dye some, distress the fabric a little bit more with the color spray. Fray off the edges of it. And I pulled that color spray into that old butter container because I found there I could mop up what was left. And I have this little um, clock hand that I'm going to use as my metal piece on this tag. I'm just looking for something to lay under it. And I actually had a scrap of paper that I had made and I it's kind of rustic looking. So I'm going to put that underneath that clock hand with a little bit of that book page that we've been using. So let's glue that fabric into place. glue our photo into place on top of the fabric.
And you may not be able to see that picture clearly, but that's three men with shovels. And let's put our book page down and our little clock face or clock hand we will glue down. And I'm thinking I want something there where there's a little hole in the center of that clock face, but I'm not liking how the threads look. So I'm pulling in the pulling back the liquid pearls and I'm just going to put a dot of the liquid pearls in that hole. So there is the second card completed. So let's ink around the outside edges and I'm choosing black to frame the card. Pulling back my three little tags, they have dried. So we'll stick them down in that first pocket. So there's the front of our little tag booklet. I'm going to cut out some sorry silk, put it back in my butter dish, and pull out that color spray again. And I am still using the vintage photo, mopping it up with, with my cheesecloth. We'll take a heat gun to it and get it dry, and we'll tie this off on the top of our tags. And I'm just going to loop it. Sticking it through the hole and just looping those ends through the, the little loop we created when we stuck it through. And there, the tags are complete. Let's stick this down inside that pocket. And let's get the tabs into place, glued on. And we'll let that glue dry. So now we have two things left. We have texture paste and foliage. So I'm pulling out my texture paste and it has gotten a little dry and I want it to be colored anyway. So the body of the texture paste has white paint in it. And I am going to add the raw umber paint to create a brown texture paste. I'm just mixing that up until I get a nice colored paste. I want to test that real fast, make sure that I haven't thinned it too much. So I'm pulling it through. It works fine. Let's just let it dry a bit and make sure that we're not putting something on the back of this card we've worked so hard on that isn't going to stand up to the test of time. So we will still need to wait a minute for the liquid pearls to dry. So while that's drying, I'm pulling in the foliage. I'm taking a twig that I had on my table, wrapping it in cheesecloth. And I'm going to just attach that with a tiny bit of glitter glue. Pulling it 
pull some threads out of my little bucket of scraps. Wrap those around. I have this tea bag. So I think I'll use the tea bag, a little piece of that lace that we color sprayed earlier as the background for this little stick that will glue to the back of the card. I'm going to add a little bit of color to the threads on that stick. So I just pulled some cordage apart that was in my bucket there. And now let's make sure that all stays in place with some of this copper wire. We'll just wrap that around. And let's glue that to the back of that card. Hopefully <clears throat> our liquid pearl dots have dried. And We'll see. So let's add some texture paste. We'll just add some little random squares down the side. So there we have our texture. Let's ink around the outside edge of this with the black like we did on the front card or the first card. And I smeared my little liquid pearls, so I'm just going to go ahead and pretend like I did that on purpose and kind of take that copper, they were copper liquid pearls, kind of take that copper and go around the outside edge of that picture and then I'll come back in at the very end and dot those pearls on there again. But we just kind of framed it a little bit with that copper. And we're going to pretend like that was on purpose. I kind of like the way it looks anyway. So let's lay down the tea bag, the lace, and the stick or the twig. going to glue that in place first and then I will come back and tie it on with a with another piece of copper. But this is how our little booklet is going to look. So let's go ahead and glue the booklet into place. So just gluing that back to those two tabs. Is kind of letting that glue set up for a bit. So we'll set that aside and create ourselves a journal, journaling pages to go inside. I'm just going to cut them to the size that will fit while we're letting that stick dry, the glue dry with that stick, and just folding them in half. And then to clean the edges of this, I pull my cutting board in, stick my straight edge, straight edge ruler on the edge of the paper, and just trim it so it's nice and uniform. And we'll bind that into our little tag booklet. So there's our booklet.
and let's get that tag, that stick. I'm going to punch a hole on either side of it. And I'm going to come through and punch that second hole. I'm just going to twist it and then wrap it around that stick. So now I know that stick is firmly in place. So our front and back cover are complete. We've used everything. We've used the gel print, the stencil, the texture paste, the color spray, the scrapbooking paper, and a piece of foliage. So we've used all six items. So the only thing we have left to do is bind in our journaling pages. So I'm just placing this where I want them. I'll pull my craft pick in and I'm going to go in between, in the center of the two tabs through the paper. And then I will punch a binding hole through each tab. And thread up a needle with some waxed thread. Go through that center hole, come back up through one of those tabs and through the top hole, back through the center, back up through the tab and through that bottom hole and we'll just tie that off with a square knot. Tie a little button on the end. And then we'll cut off the excess thread. We'll have two buttons to dangle from our <coughs> little tag booklet. on the wax thread and I've cut just a little longer edge of the wax thread because with time that will fray and wear and there is the finished book with the rustic image uh, from our yuck scrap paper the inside cover with the three tags the little journaling spot the back cover with the second picture and the clock frame or the clock hand, the back with the stick, and once again the cover, utilizing all six of the items we were challenged to do. So thank you very much for joining the hop. The link to the next video is right here, and I hope you will travel through all eight of us and subscribe to our channels and give us some support. We appreciate it very much. Thank you for being here and hop along. Bye for now.